I think I'll uh, turn it over to Ron Brown. He's our uh, club founder, and he's going to tell us today about uh, a bit about how to how to make some money off your hobby. Well, what we're going to have today is a discussion. By the way, thanks for having me. Good to see you all again. Um, some of you guys don't know who I am, but that's okay. I founded this club in 1998, uh, and then I left. No, I didn't. I was here for a long, long time. I worked with the woodworking show circuit, so I travel way more than Tommy does. I'll do 30 shows this year, or this season. Um, but my purpose today, I'll get into in just a minute. Uh, I brought a small sampling of stuff here just so we can have a discussion. And I do want to have a discussion. For those of you who, who are selling some of your items and making money, feel free to raise your hand and chime in. I'll, uh, we could, this could be almost a panel discussion. But uh, I want to start with a, with a pertinent story. And the story that I want to tell you uh, has to do with misunderstanding. And this, uh, this little boy had a puppy. Actually, his, he had a litter, and he had to sell his puppy because uh, he couldn't keep all of them. And he uh, put a sign in the yard, you know, uh, puppy for sale, 50 cents. Dad says, son, you got to think big. And 50 cents for a puppy, that, that's not right. You got to think big. So dad comes home from work. There's a sign in the yard that says, puppy for sale, $50,000. <laughs> dad says, okay, obviously he didn't understand. There, there's a miscommunication here. I'll get him straightened out. Well, he got busy, and it didn't come up, so he went ahead and went on to work, and he says, well, I'll, just, I'll discuss it when I come home tonight. Comes home, the sign is gone. What? He finds his, his son. He says, uh, the sign's gone. What happened? I said, I sold the puppy. <laughs> he said, what? I said, you got $50,000 for a puppy? Well, yeah, kind of. He said, I traded it for two $25,000 cats. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is, you know, you kind of misunderstand what's going on here. So our discussion today, I don't want any misunderstandings, okay? You guys are not going to be able to quit your jobs and go out and, uh, you know, buy a, a million dollar motor home and go all around the country. It doesn't work that way. The reason that I brought this, uh, brought this up in this topic is pretty simple. And another quick little story, not that funny. Um, I wrote, I've been selling since I was 10. I started out selling white clovering brand sab door to door when I was 10 years old for 50 cents a tin. And for the last ever, uh, I have been selling stuff. So I've sold in essentially every venue that you can think of. So I have a little bit of experience in everything from craft shows to uh, woodworking shows to, to big stuff. And uh, I wrote a, uh, a a business plan that I actually give away on my website. And this has been a fantastic experience, a real eye-opening experience. This is not a handout, but it's 26 pages long. And this is the business plan that you get totally and completely for free. So let me start out by uh, just posing something, because some of you don't care if you ever sell anything. That's OK. What if I could show you a way that you could buy any piece of woodworking equipment you wanted, or as many pieces as you wanted without a nickel coming out of the family budget? We have any takers on that? OK. Uh, if you can't pay cash right now, you might want to listen to the rest of the presentation, because we, can, we all want goodies. Most of us know folks that could use some extra money. Uh, sometimes it's even for the essentials, such as food or medicine, I know this because of my emails that I get all the time. Um, we also know parents with young children struggling just to make ends meet. So some of the stuff you learn here, you can pass along to family, friends, uh, people at church, people that you just run across, neighbors maybe. Consider the case of a single parent. Their hands are full raising their family. They're holding down maybe a full-time day job. What kind of difference do you think $700 or $1,000 a month might make to a family like that? Hmm? Big time. Significant. Significant <clears throat> difference. Uh, so I'm going to show you some ways to get there. 
the things we're going to talk about this morning have more to do with extra money than making a full-time income. If you came thinking that I was going to talk about a full-time income, it's possible, but that's not our focus, okay? Um, even those of us that do it full-time know that a lot of this is just part-time stuff. Okay, so having said that, some of us are old enough to remember the phrase, by the yard it's hard, by the inch it's a cinch. So you just do it a little at a time. So what are we talking about? i put some numbers up here. Uh, $5 a day will make you $150 a month or $1,800 a year. Not a lot, but you know, it's $150 a month. I mean, what does that pay? That can pay for your gasoline. That can pay for, uh, you know, a week's, uh, well, can pay for weeks worth of the internet. I don't mean that. Um, <laughs> but what's $5 a day? Let's sell on one of these, right? Okay. $10 a day. $10 a day make you $300 a month. Let's say you want a piece of equipment. Let's say you're going to get one of the new Jet 1014s and you're going to get to stand everything. It's going to cost you 900 bucks in round numbers, okay? So three months at $10 a day, you can buy that piece of equipment, right? Well, what do we have for $10? A little acorn lady box, right? Not a lot. And on it goes up the ladder. $15 a day is $450 a month, $20 a day is $600 a month. $20 a day is $600 a month. There's a car payment, insurance, gasoline, okay? So they don't have to drive that 25 year old clunker that breaks down every time they try to go to work, right? Could make a significant difference. The things that I'm going to talk to you about today, even though I've got turned items up here, applies to any handcrafted item, anything, from scroll saw to beads to, you know, whatever it is. It doesn't take a lot. If you'll think of it in terms of sales per day, you know, you just plug along there. Uh, take, take a jar. When you sell that stuff, put it in a jar, save it up. It'll work. So I wrote this business plan so that it would apply to all kinds of stuff. I was on an airplane going to a show somewhere, I don't even remember where, and the, uh, one of the flight attendants had a little, um, little display case and she had some semi-precious uh, jewelry necklaces that she made. And she was showing it to somebody in first class. Well, she came by me and I said, are you selling those necklaces? She says, yeah. I said, can I see them? I, I, I might want to buy some. So she came back when she got them in and opened it up, and I ordered three of them that were custom made for my wife. They weren't real expensive, but you know, she was just out there doing that, and that has happened so many times. And I'm going to show you some ways to do that. Um, lost my train of thought. Okay, when I was 25 years old, which was a long, long time ago, a fella sat me down in his office and he said, I can, this is in 1975, he said, if you'll do what I tell you to do for the next 30 days, you'll be, you'll be earning at the rate of $100,000 a year. I said, okay, <laughs> uh, you know, I want to hear, today that's well over a quarter million dollars, maybe more. And he pulled a little jar out and it was a jar of magic beans. I said, yeah, right. <laughs> what, what really are these? And he said, they're magic beans. Here's how they work. He said, if you put, pick a number, 15, 20, 25, put 25 of these beans in your right pocket. And then every day, when you start out in the morning, you have to find somebody, just as an example, and you have to say, I make these little acorn lidded boxes and I get $12.50 a piece for them. Can you think of anybody maybe I ought to show it to that might want to buy one? He said, all you got to do is say that 25 times a day. You'll make $100,000 a year. So how is that possible? And then he went through the numbers. So the magic beans, and I, I got to tell you that I was a sales manager for well over 20 years and my suits at the cleaners, I would always get a little plastic bag of beans. Why? I took him at his word. 
I put the beans in my pocket and I made those calls. And I've taught literally probably 4,000 people the magic bean story. So how does that apply to us? Well, if you decide you want to sell wholesale, okay, if you want to sell to gift shops and stuff like that, then the plan is 15 beans a week. What does that mean? That means you need to take whatever it is you're making into a store owner or whoever your, your, the manager of the gift shop is, and you walk in and you go, hi, I make some craft items, and uh, I was wondering if uh, uh, there's somebody here I could talk to that uh, maybe you'd like to carry this product. You, you do your little introduction, you do it 15 times a week, out of the 15 people that you talk to, 10 of them will tell you to go pound sand. Right? Now you get all that we want. We don't do that kind of stuff. Nah, 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 nah. Now, Ten of them are just going to tell you to get lost. Five of them will give you the time of day. Okay? Two of them will look at it and go, you know, it, there's not really a good fit. I don't want it. The other three, two of them will try to get you to put it in on consignment, which I don't recommend. Mm -hmm. One of them will give you an order and, and uh, write a check and hand your check and place an order. So your job, if you're going to do wholesale, is real simple. This week, you move your 15 beans, whether it's at lunch hour, after work, on a Saturday, I don't care. Just go say hi to 15 people that could carry your product. You'll get a new customer this week, next week, week after that, week after that. If you get 20 people carrying your stuff, you won't have time to look for new business. Right? You, I, I know this. I've done this. I, thousand times or more so you build up your your client base and that's how you do it but it literally is magic beans and the number that works in what we do here is 15 calls a week if you want to do wholesale so we'll talk about wholesale in a minute um, I also discovered that you can't be a one-note samba you can't have one item and make a living off of it it would be great if you could. It'd be great if all I needed to do was sell tops or all I needed to do was sell those acorn boxes, but it doesn't work that way. Just like when you go into the grocery store, you don't just buy eggs or you don't just buy milk. You don't just buy the, the roast beef. You buy a whole bunch of stuff. If you look in this store out here, there's a whole variety. I don't recommend that you start out making 100 different things, but pick four or five different things and have a, a line. Have, and this is a small percentage of the stuff that I make. Uh, I have gotten to the point where I don't sell finished goods anymore other than I sell the little tops and the little acorn boxes because I do classes on how to make them. And when I go around all these shows, I stand there for three solid days and lathe and make them because I'm demonstrating techniques and stuff. Well, as a byproduct of that, I end up with a whole bunch of those. So rather that. than throw them in the trash, I just I sell them. Um, Okay, let me, uh, I don't have a super good structure here, but I, I do have one I want to run on. And I want to talk about, that there are a couple of ways to approach this. You can approach it with how much money, what your goal is per month. You can approach it that way and saying, okay, I need to make X number of dollars a day. So if you need to make, if your plan is $600 a month, because you need a new car, you want to pay the insurance, you want to do the gas, $600 a month, $20 a day. One really easy way to do that, if you're getting $5 a piece for these, is to sell four of those a day. How do you do this? There is a magic line that is totally low pressure, non-offensive. It won't make anybody mad. You can say, George, I make these little tops. I usually get $5 a piece for them. I'm trying to sell them. Can you think of somebody I ought to show them to? What's going to happen? A lot of the time, George is going to go, well, yeah, you want $5? I'll take one of those. So you do this. And by the way, my website up there, Ron Brown's Best, is up here. Uh, this is free. No strings attached. You have to sign up with your email so you can download it. But you can download this. I don't know how many free downloads I've got, but probably 10 or 12. So anyway, on, on the plan, I show you different things you can sell. Well, it's, it's on the Play website. The That's what we're talking about, huh? Play to the camera. Play to the camera. There you go. Uh, the, this is a download PDF for you. 
Uh, what are you selling? How much money can you expect to make? Well, it depends on what you want to do. Oh, I know what I was going to show you. I gave you, or one of the things I give you here, I got from my old insurance days, and it's called the list of 100. There's all kinds of techniques. Keys to success, keys to owning. Hold on. There's 26 pages in here. Well, you don't want to do that. Okay. Just trust me that it's in there. The people you know, people at church, people you work with, your neighbors, post office, McDonald's, wherever you get your coffee, uh, the gas station, the auto parts store, the post office, you know them. So if you'll just always have this stuff in your pocket, for example, <coughs> if, you're gonna, if you're making these little uh, pill bottles, keep it in your pocket. You go have breakfast or lunch or what, wherever you are, I know you go to Captain D's a lot, set that out on the table. Whether you take your medicine or not, people will go, what is that? Oh, well, it's a turn lidded box. I usually get about $15 for these. You know anybody how to show it to? Really? Well, I like that. You got any more of them? Yeah, I just happen to have some over here. <laughs> uh, I also need to tell you that the easy part is making the stuff. Okay? The hard part is getting somebody to buy it. So that's what this is all about. Um, I want to talk about kinds of things that will make you money and kinds of things that will cost you money. Okay? By the way, do you know, for, for you guys getting into turning, do you know the two most popular turned items that sell in the world? Pens and bottle stoppers. No, well, pens is one. Bottle stoppers are not. Not bottle stoppers. Bowls of Bowls. Uh, anything in the kitchen. Uh, somebody was telling me, who, who did, uh, you turned the bowl and it wasn't dry enough to, to finish? Was that you? Mm -hmm. I have a philosophy. I talked to Sweet Janice, my wife, when I started turning bowls, and I said, well, she said, why don't you turn bowls? They look pretty easy and they're, they're pretty and all that. I said, well, when you turn a bowl, you got a rough turn a bowl, and then you got to put it in the bag with the sawdust, and you got to wait. She said, how long you got to wait? Three months, six months, a year, I don't know, you got to wait a long time before you can take it out, it's dry enough to turn. And she says, what happens if you don't wait? What happens if you turn the whole thing green? I said, it'll warp. She says, what's your point? <laughs> I said, well, do you care about that? Oh, she said, that looks cool. So people aren't going to know how you made that oval bowl, right? So when I turn uh, bowls, I just let it warp. Now this happened to be pretty dry when I turned it, but it isn't round. This one isn't round. So you can turn this uh, in one session, finish it, be done with it, and it's going to go oval. And people, I was talking to a guy somewhere out on the circuit, and he said that he does regular bowls that he turns two times. He turns it, lets it season, turns it again. But he said he started turning a whole lot of the green ones and letting them warp. Guess which ones are selling? By two to one. Oh, well, the war was exactly right. Dave Berger te teaches a class at John Campbell on going from green wood to finished product. Just exactly what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that brings me to another thing. Uh, there was another fella that I saw out on the circuit that had purchased one of my videos on making pens. And this guy went nuts. I mean, he had these display cases with about 20 pens in them and he had maybe 10 different display cases, and he had little notes on it that said, everything in this display case, or everything in this case, $10. Everything in this case, $10. These are turned pens, $10. And then he had $15, and $20, and $25. And I said, well, help me understand what's going on here, because you, you got money in those $10 pens. Yeah, he said, I bought a whole bunch of kits. I paid $2 a piece for them. All the wood was donated. It's from a cabinet shop. It's just regular you know, maples and walnuts and cherries and stuff. So he said, I have no cost in wood. And uh, I said, okay, well, you have your time. So what are you making per hour? What do you think he's making an hour? Yeah. You know, you don't have to say it. What? No, 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 absolutely not. No, he said, well, it takes me, no matter what I do, it takes me 20 minutes to finish a pen. He said, by the time I drill it, glue the thing in, uh, turn it, friction finish it, put it in the box, he said, I got 20 minutes. 
say someone for ten dollars. He's <laughs> he's he's yeah. generating thirty dollars an hour. hour. Okay, he's netting twenty four. Yeah, twenty eight on the on the two dollar pens. Well, no, because he sells three of them. Oh, you said you said ten dollars. He's each. selling ten dollars each. And there were two. You said two dollars for the insert. Two dollars for the insert. So he he sells three of them an hour. Yeah, he can make $24. three an hour. He's yeah. got a six dollar cost. He nets twenty four dollars an hour. Yeah, about time hmm. to sell. Huh? What about the time spent selling? We're not including that because he's he's got you know, he's anyway. somewhere. Yeah, he's like he's somewhere doing something else. Yeah, <clears throat> in all the calculations, I'm not including sales time. Okay or your time to go get the material, or any of that. Okay, we're just talking about money over the counter. Well, he says, I can't make them fast enough. He said, you think I got a lot here? This is just what I have left. He said, I, he said, I can't sell them fast enough. And he, I think he, his $25 pens, he buys $5 kits, but he didn't have anything real expensive. And he just sells them and sells them and sells them. He is totally happy making $30 an hour. Uh, okay. If you're a single parent and you're trying to make a little bit of money, $30 an hour ain't bad. Everybody likes pens, right? So how often does it, can you display a pen? Like 100 times a day, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah, I made that. That's, that happens to be a buck I burrow. I get uh, $40 for that. You know anybody I might should show it to? Want to buy one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, that, that's, it's just a natural rolls off the tongue lead in. So if, and, and it doesn't take much. I mean, that's the principle of incrementalism is what it is. Okay, if you know that. Um, by the way, my website is somewhere around here. I've written it up there, ronbrownsbest.com. That's okay. Uh, I, the reason I put that up there is I have a section in there called free downloads. You can't really see it the way we've got it set up here, but it's called free downloads. You can download that plan just all kinds of stuff. I constantly put up more stuff up there. Um, all the notes that I did when we did our uh, our little mason mason jar lid class, those notes are up there. There are all kinds of patterns and just a lot of free stuff, uh, including the plan. So when you're trying, when you're going to choose something to make, if you're shooting to make a certain amount of money per hour, which my my goal is to make sixty dollars an hour. I uh, hope to get to $100 an hour, but I probably never will. Uh, $60 an hour is what I would like to make. So what that means is that I have to be able to sell something for a dollar a minute that it takes me to make it. So if it takes me, a, if I need to sell that for a dollar a minute, and I usually sell them for $12 to $15, that means I've got to make this thing in 12 or 15 minutes, right, if I'm going to achieve my goal. Well, what if it takes me a little bit longer and I only make $40 an hour? Okay, you know, I did good, still make it. Um, this takes a lot longer to make. I have to get a lot more money for it and it's a lot harder to sell than four, five, six, or 10 of these, right? A lot more effort all the way around. But if I sell two or three of those, I've sold a whole bunch of this. So you gotta decide what you wanna do. Um, the plates and stuff are something, we haven't sold any of them, we just, uh, there's something that, that uh, my, uh, my wife and son are making. I turned all the plates and they decorated them. So it's how I'm getting them into, involved in turning. Fella came up to me at, at a wood show. His name is Morris Schlesinger. And Morris came up to me and he saw a whole bunch of the stuff I had. And he says, hey, Ron, he said, you know what I sell a lot of? I can't make them fast enough. I said, what's that? And he said, mason jar lids. And I'm thinking, how in the heck are you going to thread a mason jar lid? <laughs> well, they don't do it like that. You've got the ring. So you turn really a cover for the ring and glue the ring in and then that goes on your mason jar, right? And I said, uh, what he did was he ended up sending me some that he made, and that's, that's one of them he sent me. And you can see here that he just glued the parts together. Uh, 
and my wife loves this. I think it's ugly as can be. My wife absolutely thinks it's just the coolest thing she ever saw. So, you know, that's another thing. You want to make and sell what people want to buy, not what you want to make. Okay? Because there are a lot of things I like to make that don't sell for beans. So I just, you know, make them for my own amusement. But anyway, he said uh, he goes to uh, craft fairs and stuff, sets up his lathe, and he makes these. And people buy them right off of the lathe. And he said he sells them as fast as he can make them. I said, well, how long did it take you to make them? Oh, he said, I don't know, 12, 14 minutes, 15 minutes maybe. I said, what do you get for him? He said, $5. I said, well, that's $20 an hour. I think you're selling them too cheap. Yeah, I, I've been thinking that too, but uh, I'm happy with that. Okay, got another job, makes 20 bucks an hour. You know, doing that, I, I would charge a little bit more. But it's up to you. Make whatever, you, I don't know your environment. I don't know the people that, you know, what they do in your particular world. But there are things that you can make that will make you a bunch of money. And I didn't bring any, I should have. Do you guys know what the pendants are with the little arcs in them that you wear as a necklace? You know what I'm talking about? On a pendant jig? Yep. If, if you don't, there's a pendant jig that will turn off center. And when it turns off center, you can put different uh, arcs in it, that sort of stuff. Make them out of all kinds of colored wood and uh, spalted wood and some of the uh, fiddleback maple and that kind of stuff. This would actually with the, uh, the chatoyance in here, the figure, that would have made a really nice pendant. You can get $15 a piece for those, and it literally takes three minutes to make one. Do the math on that. That's how you get up there in, in that. But back to our, our, our root focus here, and that is that you're not trying to, to make your mortgage payments. You're not trying to quit your regular job. You're just trying to make some money to buy equipment or do some extra stuff. Uh, my motivation for, as I told you earlier, my motivation for the free business plan was to help single parents. I would, through the, the church I belong to, we have a, a ministry where we take care of uh, single, single moms and their kids and fix their cars and, you know, uh, repair appliances and do work on their their uh, houses and stuff like that. And they never have two nickels to rub together. You know, they're just, most of them are just scraping by. And I thought, what a difference a few hundred dollars a month would make to these people. So I wrote the plan so they can do it. A, they get to stay home with the kids, okay? Um, I have a daughter-in-law who loves to make beads and stuff. And uh, she sells her stuff at craft fairs and flea markets and that sort of thing. So that was the motivation, but it works and it's applicable all across the board. So I wanted to talk to you about the kinds of things that fit the formula. Um, these are nice to have. <coughs> They're hard to sell, take a lot of time, and you got to get a lot of money for it if you're going to try to make any money at all. On the other There's hand... a lot of room on your shelf. <laughs> yeah, store. yeah, a lot of room on your shelf. Uh, but believe it, you know, there's a reason why McDonald's is, is as big as they are. They sell the small, easy to buy, everybody's got five bucks in their pocket, you know, buy one of these, versus Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Okay, there are people that go there, but there are a whole lot more people that go to McDonald's. So if you're trying to make this incremental money, do it with the little stuff. Do it with the pins. Do it with a small bowl. Do it with something like this. Okay, do it, do it with the little stuff and figure out how, when you first make something, it's going to take you a long time. If you're going to make a little coffee scoop, the first five of these, Mike, that you make, it's going to take you all day, right? But you'll, you'll get quicker. Baby rattles, you can set this up, sell these for $10 and hit your $50, $60 an hour goal. Okay. We've got a few minutes here. I know that was kind of rambling. There's just so much information. If you go to my website, there's a free download, no strings attached, download whatever you want. Ron, yes. when you were selling wholesale, what kind of margin did you have to give up? Let's talk about wholesale margins. I have kind of a philosophy because everybody and their brother knows that they're going to mark it up 100%. Right? 
It's called a keystone. Keystone. If you sell something, if something is going to retail for $100, let's say, then wholesale is going to be $50. Well, if, if it costs you whatever it costs you to make it, and you, you, uh, you're selling, you've got a wholesale for $50, the, uh, the, the, per, the retailer that's going to sell it, he wants to make his 100 so I cheat and I give my customers, if you'll buy it here at this, at this venue today, special just for you, this is a $100 item, I'm going to give you a 25% discount. And I'm going to sell it to you for 75 bucks. So I'm going to wholesale it for 50. I'm going to, I'm get my retail, my real honest to God, what I want for it is going to be 75. The philosophy is that the person you're wholesaling it to is going to be able to get more money than you are at a craft fair, okay, or one on one, because they have the trappings and you know the display cases and they've got the high rent and all that stuff. So, plus everybody likes a deal. Who to bump, right? <laughs> so, uh, well, I'll give you 25%. Uh, I got a couple other things here, before, and then we'll get back to questions if we still have them. We did talk about the magic beans. I explained that. That is in the business plan. Uh, the Volkswagen Huns and I were talking this morning, and that's uh, why I want to tell you this story. When I moved to Georgia in 1979, I had a Volkswagen bus that I needed to sell in California, where I'm from, <coughs> and I had put $2,000 on it. It was sharp. I mean, I really liked this thing and had brand new paint. It was gorgeous. So I got no bites. Three weeks went by. The moving van came. I got a lead. So a fellow at the church who turns out, this crowd's old enough to know who Ricky Ricardo is, <coughs> Junior Little Ricky. Little Ricky's bodyguard and I went to the same church, and we were friends. And he said, well, I'll sell the van for you. He's somebody I trusted. Okay. He said, I'll sell the van for you. How firm are you on the price? I said, well, I don't want to drop it, you know, much. He goes, okay. So I come to Georgia. Ten days later, I get a check for $3,000. <laughs> I said, what's the extra thousand for? He said, the reason you weren't getting any bites is because it was too cheap. People thought something was wrong with it. I raised the price a thousand bucks, sold it in two days. <laughs> right? So tell them your story, Hans. In my case, I had I had a number of I had a number of crosses that I had. I had five or six crosses, and you know they take a long time to make. And I had forty-five to fifty dollars on it. I went to five craft shows, hadn't sold the first one. People looked at me, hadn't sold the first one. So I was at another craft show. It was early in the morning. Took out my magic marker, and I was starting to change the prices on. I was going to lower them, of course. And the lady next door, who I didn't know from Adam's house cat, said, what are you doing? I said, I hadn't sold these in five craft shows. I'm going to lower the price. I'm tired of lugging them around and whatever. She said, oh, no, don't lower them. I took the pen, threw it to her, and I said, you price them. It wasn't going to make any difference to me. She priced them at 100 125 I sold them to four different people at that show. <laughs> Perceived value. So don't. Don't price your things too low because people, if you price this thing at $25, people are saying, just like this thing, this might not be, but you price it at $500, people will buy it. I mean, it's, it's. So my, my contribution here is if something's not selling, try raise raising the price a little bit first. Okay? You might not be charging enough. Okay, so that's the books like it. Ron, tell them, you're, tell them on that same thing, tell them what you do at the close of the show. If somebody comes in and wants it for, what you sat it for twenty five. I don't know which, where you're going, but you sat it for twenty five. The guy says, "Well, I want you got fifty on that. I'll, can I buy it for forty? And you say, "No, it's sixty now." Right, <laughs> because the show's over. Yeah. yeah, I just tell them I don't charge for scarcity. Yeah. Do you have any more? No, that's the last one. I don't charge for scarcity. <laughs> so well, the show's for... over. <laughs> well, I got eighteen more shows, friend. You know, it's not like I'm not going to sell them. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is kitchen utensils. Kitchen utensils, whether you do it totally on a bandsaw, whether you turn the hand on a lathe and do it on a bandsaw, that is a red hot selling item. Make it out of scrap. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I think there are all kinds of pictures on my website. 
Go look at kitchen utensils. When I go to craft shows, the American Craft Council shows, any craft show where somebody is standing there with spatulas and spoons and scoops and stuff, that's where the big crowds always are. And the guy standing over there can't take the money fast enough. So if you're trying to earn a little money, it's really easy, really quick. It's universal application. Okay, everybody has it. Think about it. if you're if you're looking for something to make, and you happen to be a flat worker with a bandsaw, make some spatulas and stuff out of scrap wood. Whether it's uh, don't use red oak, but you can use cherry or white oak or maple or beech or any of that kind of stuff. Do you have to put any kind of finish on that? that put oil on it. One of my favorite axioms is in order to be an overnight success, just work your ass off for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Thank you.